we are very happy today to present you um, a person that I call a digital poet. Uh, he's a pioneer, and you've just seen one of his works, the kinetic sculpture uh, that was done for the BMW Museum. Um, uh, Professor Joachim Sauter. Joachim, we are very happy to have you here. Tell us uh, about your company before you formed it. What, what, yeah. uh, how, how did you arrive at the idea to uh, be a digital poet? Yeah. yeah, this was at the very beginning of the digital age, as we call it, digital age. It was in the early 80s. And there we have seen a widespread of the personal computers, and we as designers, we use it as a tool heavily. So we modeled with this, we uh, made movies with uh, the computer, but then we figured out it's not only a tool, but it's also a medium with which you can communicate information or narration. And this was the motivation for a group of designers, artists on one hand from the uh, University of the Arts in Berlin, and on the other hand we had six or seven hackers from the Chaos Com Computer Club here in Berlin. We formed a group because we were very interested how can we use this new technology to express ourselves. So it was at the very beginning and I think it was on the verge on, uh, on a new area, era how and a new uh, time uh, and this was something very, very interesting for us. You said some hackers. I yeah. mean, uh, those are criminals, aren't they? Uh, it depends from which standpoint you, uh, you look at that. But at that time, and I remember, we had times where they were not allowed to travel to West Germany. You know, it was in the former uh, 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 Bundesrepublik where we had the wall at that time. So we had uh, occasions where we couldn't take our programmers with us because they were not allowed to leave uh, Berlin. How come you formed it in Berlin? I think this was the only city where things like that could happen. So it's, it had been also in the pre-wall time, it had been a very open city. We had a very interesting subculture. We didn't have any kind of professional culture here in Berlin. Yes, there was no, uh, no really serious advertisement agency, for instance. There was no real serious movie company here. So it was this kind of subculture which starts slightly to professionalize itself. So this was a kind of good turf to start something like that. So you formed it with some uh, clients, or how did you form it? Uh, at the very beginning, um, we formed it with our own, let's say, engagement with our own. We didn't have any money. Yet. So I had been, all, I had a, a job already at the university. So we brought our money into that, but it was really formed out of our, our personal interest. But then, very early, uh, things like, you don't believe it, uh, but uh, companies like German Telecom, who had been attacked by hack hackers all the time, mm -hmm. they gave a lot, us a lot of money at the very beginning to make research how the future telecommunication would look like. So they came to us and they gave us research money and so we had a lot of uh, time and, and also technology to make experiments and predict the future. Yeah. I mean, my take on, on your work, uh, I said it's poetry to me. It's poetry in a way because you're taking very uh, common things like a table. Mm -hmm. And on the table, you used to have conversations. You yeah. did things together on the table. That's yeah. why the table were made. Yeah. And suddenly you blew in, uh, took it into the digital age. Yeah and it became something absolutely amazing, but it's still a poetic take on a very normal thing. That's certainly true, so, but this was a development, you know. Our, uh, the first seven years of Artcom, we had been made all this research about and prediction, what technology looked like. In the second uh, seven years, so we have this kind of seven year phases, we proved all this thing and now we are using it because the medium is matured and uh, we are very interested in to use it in a way people do, uh, haven't used it before. So after 10 and 15 years of internet, people want to go out and experience information with other people together in physical space. So therefore we are using a lot of this, let's say, everyday objects because they are connotated already, you know. Table, as you mentioned before, is something where we mm -hmm are used to sit together and communicate. And so we try to provoke a communication between the content and the people and the 
people and the people and the people and the content. Yeah, another good object would be uh, Calder's uh, Mobile also. I mean, he, he probably would have done it that way. Yeah, right? totally. I, Today, yeah? Uh, it would be a big honor if Calder would have said, okay, this is something which I would have done also. So, but this is exactly what we feel. So, you know, in the, in the past we used Pixel on the monitor and now we used we are using pixel in space, we call them voxel, so volume elements, not picture elements anymore. So these spheres or little balls you have seen before, they are really pixel in space, nothing yeah. else. So I mean the pieces I know, uh, I mean those are unique pieces, single pieces. Uh, can you imagine that, there is, that they go into mass production? There are a lot of people asking always, can we multiply things? But we personally are not interested. But as soon as you're developing a product, you have to take care about the product. And this is something we are not interested in. So we made one, let's say, I don't want to say mistake, but it was a thing we really discussed afterwards heavily because in 1994, we developed a system which is nothing else than Google Earth nowadays. And people really, loved it and said, you have to develop it for, to a product. And we always said, no, we don't do it because if we are taking care and doing all our energy into products, we lose our innov innovative power. Now, um, uh, if you take uh, uh, the, the, the kinetic sculpture uh, you guys did for uh, BMW, uh, and, and you look at BMW's communication, Overall, where does it fit? Uh, BMW has this brand values like precision and like dynamics. And this is exactly what this culture is talking about. How have you de defined your company and what is the place you think you own or where you want to drive the company? And if I would uh, be able to give you now the precise answer, I would be very happy. But there are some tendencies, so one tendency is for sure going more into public space. If you do something in public space, uh, for instance an installation, people they are passing by and then they are confronted with something they are not expecting. Yeah. And that's a totally different field to work in and this is something which we want to uh, research in the next seven years. Okay, so I mean, do you let it happen or do you look for a place? Are you close to define it? or? Does it just happen? Both. So there are, there are things where we see that if we propose them, people are in a way interested in. So we always do this kind of, we have to do this testing. And then we try to predict how things can be look like in the future. So how does a job come to its existence? Is it like architecture that a company says, I want to have something for my museum and they contact you? Well, how, how, how does it work? Uh, let's explain it with the BMW Museum. They said, okay, we don't only want to show our things, but we want to dramatize them, and we want to um, give them an additional layer of information. So it's not only the oretic object, but it's also uh, additional information. And we see as a technology company, because they consider themselves also as a technology company, they, they want to do it in a technological way. So we had been the right persons. So who hired you from BMW? Was it the marketing person? Was it the, the communication manager? Uh, no, it was they, they have a department for history. And they had already the idea to have something to bring their past uh, designs to life? They had, a, they had a museum already, but it, it was after 30 years, you know, it was a yeah. problem. So they, 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 and, and also uh, all the competitors, uh, uh, Audi did uh, a new museum. So everyone yeah. uh, focused on that. It's important showing your history. It's important to bring people into a physical uh, uh, situation with the, with the product. They decided to do Experience it. Experience place. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, if you look at all your work, it all has very high standards. Yeah? I mean, how do you manage that with your clients? You know, sometimes clients say, okay, okay let's reduce the money, let's do something or so. Yeah? Directing Artcom, we are two persons, so it's, it's the money and manager guy and me as the creative guy. So I'm always on the 130% and he's always on the 80%. So we meet at 100 to 105% in quality mm -hmm. at the end. Um, uh, this is, I think, 
much more difficult than the, the negotiation with the client. We had at Leo Burnett a yeah. very simple thing, yeah. you know. If the chief creative officer yeah. Yeah, was not behind it, the client didn't see it. It's the same, it's yeah. the same. Uh, but what, what we are doing, we are sitting together with the clients nearly every week, so a lot of workshops, and this is uh, also an occasion where you can com really convince yeah. people. Now. now you said you have motivated people. Mm -hmm. How do you motivate them? Are they motivated by the things they do anyway? Or uh, is there additional things? I mean, creative people are very often really down because they yeah. cannot realize their ideas. So we have a very flat hierarchy, very important. People have to leave at least at 8 o'clock. There are exceptions, but they, if, if they don't, uh, if they haven't finished their work at 8 o'clock, they are not really uh, doing their things well. So. There's no, uh, there's no, let's say, pressure that they have to, like I know from my times in advertisement, that we have to work over the weekends and so on. So, so we, we are calculating jobs in a way that people really, that we have enough people on jobs, for instance. Yeah. We are investing into ideas and this is what, what people really motivate. Uh, it was absolutely key at Leo Burnett Chicago mm -hmm. that we did a lot of exploratory work for mm -hmm. our clients mm -hmm and did not ask the client yeah. to, to pay for that because that was part of the income anyway yeah, yeah. and was in re put in research and development. Yeah. Today, I mean, yeah. it is a different situation and I think right there yeah. a huge mistake is made. Absolutely. Do you feel that also? Yeah. Or? I feel the same thing, but uh, uh, two answers. One is because we are doing innovative things which are really difficult very often to explain how they are working at the end. Uh, we are always asking for test setups, for instance, making experiments to find out a good solution. Um, this is one thing. As mentioned before, uh, we keep money to not make experiments for the clients, but to allow people at Artcom to uh, realize their ideas. And then this, the, the, this uh, afterwards projects from the people. How do you lead yourself? Yeah. How do I lead myself? Yeah, in, in order to, you know, stay excited. Oh, I mean, okay. I know you okay. now okay. for quite some time, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and you have not changed, yeah. and you, you always are looking forward to yeah. the next project. Um, oh. uh, I try not to think about how I do it. Okay. <laughs> Probably that's the, that's the secret. No, uh, uh, I think I have a very clear answer to that. As mentioned before, I have a professorship at the University of the Arts. And what I always figured, and I would actually don't give this job up for any other uh, thing else, it's so important because the students, they force you to be precise. So they force you to reflect what you're doing. Because if you don't do it, they ask the, uh, the questions, you know, and you can't answer, answer them. So uh, they keep you, in a way, very, very precise in what you are doing. All the discussions with the students uh, are so fruitful and it's, it's so important. I, I couldn't do Artcom without being um, at the university. And I all, also force all my people at Artcom to teach. So half of the uh, creative staff is teaching at the University of the Arts in Potsdam at the Fachhochschule. You can't pay for that, you know. Do you have a project in mind that you really want to uh, bring to life and... Yeah. I have some projects. Um, I, I'm very, let's say, Bauhaus-oriented, Ulm Hochschule-oriented, a very, let's say, strict guy. I was educated with the right angle and gray and Helvetica and making things very clear. And I'm now 50, I got my 50th birthday some weeks ago, and now it's about beauty. It's only about beauty. So my interest is now, how can I open up people with beauty uh, that they afterwards are more motivated to look behind uh, this and then experience information, for instance. So you have artists, you have designers, and you have technicians. And scientists. And scientists, sorry, yeah. Sorry. And money guys. So and that, that's the color. How many people? Um, so I wish that we are only 30, but at the moment we are 50. So, okay. and I, but I think I can reduce it uh, back to 30, hopefully. You have been in various communication businesses before, advertising and so forth. What can communication today learn from what you are doing? I think you know, the key thing at the moment is that uh, having 
uh, getting communication physical, having this one-to-one -one relationship, uh, introducing people in one space, uh, de-virtualize your communication, uh, getting physical. Well, my simple take in marketing is inspiration for chosen people. Yeah. And I must say what you're doing is very inspiring. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Yeah.